Hi, for some project I need to know the relative permittivity of this insulation material. This is a piece of earth wire that is used in electrical installation. I know that the insulation material used in this type of wire is usually made of PVC and I have checked the data sheet of this um, wire and indeed it states that this is PVC. I have searched through internet and I found out that different references they state different value for relative permittivity of PVC. In one reference, for example, it says it's 2.7. In another one, it says it's 2.79. Somewhere else says it's 4, and in another reference, it states it is between 3 to 7. Maybe this is because we have different forms of PVC. For example, we have plain PVC, we have PVC U, which is unplasticized PVC, we have CPVC, which is chlorinated PVC, and so on. So probably each reference gave value of relative per permittivity for different forms of uh, PVC. Anyway, I need to measure this relative permittivity myself because I want to use it in some analysis. My plan is to, to add aluminium tape across 20 cm of this wire and then I will have a capacitor. This is one terminal and aluminium tape will be the second terminal. So I will measure the capacitance of this uh, capacitor. Also, this is a coaxial structure, and I know the capacitance of a coaxial structure. So I can combine the measurement together with the analytical formula, and basically I can extract the relative permittivity out of these two. Okay, so let's do the experiment and find out the results. Okay, so here are my equipment. This is the wire. I'm going to mark uh, 20 centimeter across this wire because... I want to later on to add the uh, aluminum foil on it. So maybe from here, somewhere from here to to this point. So I should for 20 centimeters. So I need a piece of aluminum foil, which is 20 centimeter roughly. Aluminum tape, not aluminum foil. This is basic. That is on the middle tape. So now I don't need all of them. So you must be very careful not to create a wrinkle on this because you want to have a really smooth connection. Otherwise, if there is air pocket in between the foil and the plastic, you change the capacitance. Okay, so now I have the two electrodes. Remember that this type of aluminum foil, some of them, the glue is not conductive. So you don't want to um, cut in this way and put it here and then add another layer, another layer, because these sections will not be electrically connected. That's why I put a very long one, because in that, that direction they are uh, already connected. So now what I do is that I turn on my multimeter and uh, I set it on capacitance. I have to wait until it stabilizes because it takes a few, maybe a minute before it stabilizes. So I wait a bit. This one, it stabilizes at 288, maybe 289, wait a few seconds more. Okay, something like uh, 289 pico, pico fry. 
uh, maybe I bring it just very close to this but I don't touch it so this one is 293 now this is the capacitance of the the connections and whatever else it has nothing to do with the capacitance of that one 293 pico farad and now I measure this capacitance so 396 so 293 396 this gives us 103 pico farad so now the measurement shows 103 pico farad and the length of this as we have done the measurement if I do it once more this is approximately yeah 20 maybe a bit less this is 19.8 millimeter okay so now I bring a piece of paper okay so here is the formula of a capacitance for coaxial structure which is 2 pi epsilon 0 epsilon r times the length of the structure and divided by ln of the outer radius to inner radius now I have to measure the I will measure the diameter of the conductor and diameter of the outer diameter so that gives me 2b 2a and then from there I can calculate this term the length of the wire we have calculated is 19.8 centimeter and then every parameter is known except this epsilon r c also we have calculated is 103 picofarad okay so let me I measure the the diameter of this wire Maybe from this side is more. Um, so diameter is something around 4.4, 4.48. Diameter is something around 4.43. So it's 4.5. So diameter is around 4.5. And then the conductor, I know it, it should be about 3. So this is 2.91, it's 2.83, this is 2.94. So the diameter of conductor is about 3. So I can replace this basically this one is 4.5 and this one millimeter but it doesn't matter because it cancels out here and this one is 3 millimeter so all these parameters are known so I put them uh, into the equation and then I calculate epsilon r so c is actually 2 times so here I replace the parameters basically I have two, uh, the pi, this is the permittivity of vacuum, epsilon r is unknown, 19.8 centimeter, and then these are the numbers, and eventually the related permittivity is, is something like 3.85. Now, still I am not 100% sure if this everything is correct or not. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure the related permittivity of something that I know, and that is Teflon. Teflon related permittivity is approximately 2.1. I want to use similar approach to calculate the related permittivity of Teflon and then I I see how accurate my measurement is okay let's do this here I have a piece of Teflon and I'm going to cut a few centimeter of um, aluminium tape and uh, place it on top of that Teflon so tape to same size and later on I measure the dimension okay you go away then this so here I I have um so this is one electrode of these parallel plate capacitors. This is not coaxial structure. So this is one electrode. And I am going to make another electrode from here. Okay. So I try to place them right on top of each other to, to avoid almost on top of each other oh, there is a little bit of wrinkle there but let us accept that if there is air in between as I mentioned before the capacitance of that air part slightly changes the the total capacitance of the sample 
Okay, so now let us measure the, the capacitance of this part. So again, I separate these wires. Okay, so this is 194, 193. And now what I do is that this is 348. 293, 348. So it's 48 plus 7 is 55. So this capacitance is approximately 55. Now it's 46. Okay, so now it's... So this is 93. So if this is 93, 93, and then this gives me 48. So this is 55. 55 picofarad. And I can, again, similarly calculate. So C is basically epsilon 0, epsilon A, A divided by D. And uh, so now I have to calculate the, the thickness of this. The thickness of this is 1 millimeter, 1 millimeter, 1.1, which is approximately 1 millimeter. So the thickness is 1 millimeter, let's say. So D here is 1 millimeter. So this is the formula for parallel paid capacitor. D here is one millimeter and A is one side of this tape is five centimeters, so I know that already. Don't need to calculate again. This side is is six point one millimeter. It's six point one centimeter. And the other side was the same because I cut the same length. Six point one centimeter. Okay, so here I have I can replace these two. So with this calculation, I get that epsilon r will be 2.04 for Teflon. And for Teflon, I know that epsilon r is almost 2.1. So this approximation is roughly correct. Okay, I have calculated and measured the, the relative permittivity of that insulation material. Before I end the video, I would like to add a few extra points. The first thing is that relative permittivity is a complex number. So it has a real part and it has imaginary part. Now... The real part is related to the capacitive current, about the displacement current, and the imaginary part is related to the polarization and conduction losses. So what we have calculated was just the real part. If you want to calculate the imaginary part, we need more accurate equipment. Maybe in another video I can use an oscilloscope and Fourier transform to show you how you can extract the imaginary part of the permittivity. The second point that I want to mention is that permittivity is frequency dependent. So it depends on which frequency you do the measurement, you may get different values. And the third point that I want to mention is, uh, in our calculation, I did not consider the fringing effect. Both in the case of coaxial structure at both ends, we have some fringing effect. And also in the case of parallel plate capacitor at the edges, we have fringing effect. If you consider those, then um, probably the capacitance will be different by a few percent. And so the relative permittivity will also be different by a few percent. Okay, so I hope that you have learned something new. Um, see you maybe in another video. Bye.